I don't take it lightly, but may God's name be glorified. Hallelujah. Today, um, I was, um, I've been asking God what I should say. He gave me this message, I think a month ago, and he told me that when you're preaching, this is what you're going to tell my people. I know many of you have heard, you've been in leadership conferences, you've had leadership classes, you know, but it doesn't hurt to hear this again. I'm going to speak about leadership this morning. Um, actually, the, when I was praying, God told me that every person that is going to be here today is a leader. And he told me that in that church, I am raising up great leaders. Hallelujah. But they need to know a few things as you, know, as you get along, as you grow up in leadership and everything. And as I was praying, I told God that, Father, we, yes, we, you're raising up leaders in this place. And, he, and I told him, but what, what do you want us to do? Because we don't want to be like any other leader. Today, as we talk, there are so many leaders out there who are misleading people. But I pray that in the name of Jesus, that will not be our portion. Amen. Amen. That we will lead the people to the right places. <clears throat> I'll start by defining leadership. Leadership is a social influence in which one person enlists the aid and support to, of others to accomplish a common task. I underline a common task because the common task in the kingdom of God is winning souls and glorifying God. Amen. We, God is in the business of souls. He doesn't care, you know, about... Anything. His sole reason is souls. Souls are the currency of heaven. Amen. Without souls, heaven cannot. Because the Bible says that when people come to Jesus, there is a, a party in heaven. Hallelujah. So as leaders, we have to be in the business of winning souls. Um, another definition of leadership is creating a way for people to contribute to making something extraordinary happen. I will say that again. Creating a way for people to contribute to making something extraordinary happen. How many of you want something extra? I'm tired of the ordinary. I'm tired of, you know, what, doing what everyone else can do. I want to do something extraordinary. If you, can open to me, if you can open with me to the book of Ephesians 4. Ephesians 4, 11 to 12. The Bible says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. As leaders, you know, we are supposed to equip the saints. Amen. Amen. Equip the saints. All of you here come from probably different countries, right? And God has brought you, he has put you in this church, in this particular place for such a time as this. Tomorrow you may not be here. You may have your own church or your own ministry somewhere. But what are you going to do? Do you know, first of all, do you know what your calling is? Are you a prophet? Are you an evangelist? Are you a pastor? Are you a teacher? You know, because all this is for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. For the edifying of the body of Christ. As leaders, we have to equip the saints. God is using us to equip the saints. Amen. Um, 
what should you do as a leader? What things should you take into consideration as a leader? <clears throat> as a leader, you have to have a personal relationship with God. You cannot be a leader without a personal relationship. I'm talking about a personal relationship whereby you meet with your God on a personal basis every day. It's just you and God. No TV, no distraction, no friend, no phone calls, you and God. You know, I was listening to one of uh, the preachers. He's called Mike Madoka. I like listening to him so much. And he was saying that if you are a leader and you don't have a room where you just meet with God, then you have a problem. And then he said, if you have a big house, you, you need to have a room. In fact, he was telling a story. He was saying that when they were growing up, his father was so, you know, like he was so Holy Spirit minded to the point that he used to pack them all up in one room and he would have one other room just for him and God. And so the kids would be like, but that room is empty. And he's like, no, there's someone in that room. It was the Holy Spirit. That is where he used to meet the Holy Spirit. So if you have an apartment, you have a small house, you may have a car, you can meet the Holy Spirit in your car. You need to have a place for the Holy Spirit. You need to build a relationship with your God as a leader. Because God is raising up leaders in this place. Leaders who are going to have a personal relationship with him. Because remember, behind you, Mama, there is a generation behind you. I'm not speaking to, I'm speaking to a generation. There, there is a huge generation behind you because you're going to speak to people who are going to speak to people who are going to speak to. So behind you, there is a huge generation. So if God raises up leaders who have a personal relationship with him, he's going to be able to speak to you on a personal basis so you can lead his people, just like he did to Moses. Hallelujah. So as leaders, we have to have an intimate relationship. I'm, I'm not talking about coming to church every Sunday. I'm not talking about going to a Wednesday service somewhere or having this house fellowship at home or praying when you're going to eat. Mm -mm. I'm talking about a personal relationship with your God, whereby you wake up in the morning, you go to a place, you have to have a specific place where you meet God. I don't care what you're putting on in the morning, go to that place. And let me tell you, when the Holy Spirit knows you've come, he will begin to speak. Hallelujah. He has to speak. He has to tell you on a daily basis, give you instruction what you're supposed to do. I was telling <coughs> one of my friends recently, I was telling them that I want to build a relationship with the Holy Spirit to the point whereby he tells me now, do this, do the other, and do this. Let me tell you a small story. There's a time I was driving without insurance. You know, <laughs> I was paying this insurance, and I got so angry. I'm like, I have an old car. I am paying insurance. Uh-uh, I'm not going to pay this insurance. So in December, I, I, I think I stopped paying insurance like in November. So I drove the car in November, December, I drove the car, January, I drove the car, February, I drove the car. So recently, <clears throat> you know, when the year began, I was like, I need to have a personal relationship with God. So I was praying, and the Holy Spirit was speaking to me, and he told me, by the way, you need to get insurance. And I'm like, but God, uh, why? You know, uh, you're covering me. You know, like, I don't need insurance. The Holy Spirit is covering me, so I don't. And then he told me, I have covered you enough. If you don't get insurance before the end of this week, they are going to get you on the road. And I'm like, uh-oh. And so <coughs> I, I, I neglected.